Hello everyone. Today's topic is design for quality and product excellence. Perhaps you've checked out a couple of videos that I've posted. Um, some examples of quality in organizations. You have Spicer Drive Shaft. It's a former division of Danacorp. Now Torque Traction Technologies, one of the largest manufacturers of drive shafts and related components. Uh, they have customer platform teams, which are focal points for identifying customer requirements, building and maintaining new business, product offerings, customer relationships. The teams are made up of sales, engineering, quality, and warranty personnel. Also, uh, one video I did post was Pooter Valley Health System. They design new services, um, what they, uh, what's called using the uh, voice of the customer approach. So everything is centered on customer needs. They actually dis, uh, developed or designed the entire hospital based on uh, needs of the customer, the patients. So certain uh, rooms, facilities, equipment are in specific locations because that's the way uh, they see uh, people moving to in, a, in a, an efficient manner. They also sent their employees to Disney whereas uh, Disney was somewhat of an expert in the field of customer service and also showing the idea of in front of the customer and behind the scenes where everybody, you know, not everybody gets to see what's going on behind the scenes, but they're always presenting a certain uh, face to the customer. So when you walk into the hospital, they don't want um, kids and patients that don't need to be exposed to the emergency room and some of those things. Uh, so they've, they've done a number of things that are really customer focused and if you get a chance watch that video. When we talk about product development, product design, there's uh, six steps. We have idea generation where here you're kind of brainstorming and coming up with a number of different ideas based on customer needs and expectations. So new or redesigned product ideas, again, you're, you're looking at what those needs are from the customer. Everything should be starting from that point. Preliminary concept development. Here you're studying new ideas for feasibility. Is it, uh, can we do this from a cost standpoint, from an engineering standpoint? Product or process development. Uh, if an idea survives a concept stage, the actual design process begins by evaluating design alternatives, determining engineering specs for all materials, components, and parts. It usually includes prototype testing, design reviews, development, testing, standardization, and manufacturing processes. Then if that's successful, you go into full-scale production. Uh, if you have no serious problems are found, uh, you're going to release the product to manufacturing or service delivery teams. Then you have market introduction, where the product is going to be distributed to your customers. The market evaluation, which is ongoing, you're going to look at um, responses from customers, what's working, what's not working. An example would be uh, 3M. Uh, they make everything in terms of adhesive products from post-it notes to um, highlighter pens with flags in them. And uh, I'll, share, I'll try to share with you a video uh, the person who developed the idea for the highlighter pen, his process of continually going back to the customer to find out what they wanted. Everything from uh, the colors, uh, refills, um, what the pen should look like, and the functionality for it. Concurrent engineering. Uh, this is a process where all major functions are involved uh, with bringing a product to market. And they're continuously involved with product development from conception of the idea through sales. Uh, the approach not only helps achieve trouble-free introduction of products and services, but also results in improved quality, lower costs, and shorter product life development cycles. It involves multifunctional teams, usually consisting of four to 20 members, and including every specialty in the company. Uh, the functions of the teams are to perform and coordinate activities in the product development process simultaneously rather than just going from one to the other. So you're trying to achieve a competitive advantage, become more efficient. So typical benefits usually include a 30 to 70 percent less development time, 65 to 90 percent fewer engineering changes, 20 to 90 percent less time to market, uh, 200 to 600 percent improvement in quality, a 20 to 110 percent improvement 
in productivity and uh, 20 to 120 percent higher return on assets. The idea that everybody's talking to one another throughout the process. Designing for Six Sigma uh, uses a set of tools and methodologies in the product development process to ensure that goods and services will meet customer needs and achieve performance objectives, and that the process is used to make and deliver them achieve Six Sigma capability, which we'll discuss in another chapter in more detail. So design for Six Sigma consists of four principal activities. You have concept development, design development, design optimization, and design verification. Concept development is a, where product functionality is determined based on customer requirements, technological capabilities, and economic realities. Design development focuses on product and process performance issues necessary to fulfill the product and service requirements in manufacturing and delivery. Design optimization looks to minimize the impact of variation in production and use. And then design verification ensures that the capability of the production system is going to meet appropriate Six Sigma levels. Concept development is a process applying scientific, engineering, and business knowledge to produce a basic functional design that meets both customer needs and manufacturing or service delivery requirements. Developing new concepts is going to require innovation and creativity. That's an important tool for assuring quality because it provides a systematic process that leaves a strong audit trail back to the voice of the customer. This makes it difficult to challenge the results of skeptics and, and convert them. Uh, the process also helps to build consensus and gives design teams confidence in selling their concept to management. However, it does take a lot of discipline and patience. Innovation involves the adoption of an idea, a process, technology, product, or business model that's either new or new to its proposed application. Innovations can be classified as an entirely new category of product, for example, the, the iPhone or the iPod when it came out, the first of its type on the market in a product category already in existence, for example, a DVD player, um, a significant improvement in existing technology, such as the Blu-ray player at the time, and a modest improvement to an existing product, such as, uh, let's say, the latest iPad or latest iPhone. Now, creativity is uh, seeing things in new or novel ways. Uh, in Japanese, the word creativity has a literal translation as dangerous opportunity. Many creativity tools, such as brainstorming and brain writing, which is a written form of brainstorming, are designed to help change the context in which one views a problem or an opportunity, to look at things out of the box. Uh, thereby, you want to get a fresh perspective on things. A creativity tool that finds extensive use in product design is TRIZ, TRIZ, which is a Russian acronym for the Theory of Inventive Problem Solving. It was developed by a Russian patent clerk who recognized that concepts of inventive problem solving could be taught in order to foster creative problem solving. Now, conceptual designs have to be translated into measurable technical requirements and uh, subsequently into a detailed design specifications. Detailed design focuses on establishing technical requirements and specifications which represent the transition from a designer's concept to a producible design, while also ensuring that it can be produced economically, efficiency, efficiently, and with high quality. Quality function deployment uh, benefits companies through improved communication and teamwork between all areas in the production process, such as between marketing and design, between design and manufacturing, between purchasing and suppliers, Product objectives are better understood and interpreted during the production process. The use of this process also determines the causes of customer dissatisfaction, making it a useful tool for competitive analysis, product quality by top management. We talk about the house of quality. With the house of quality, uh, building the house of quality consists of st six basic steps. As you can see here, first you want to identify your customer requirements, identify technical requirements, 
relate the customer requirements to those technical requirements, conduct an evaluation of competing products or services, evaluate technical requirements and develop targets, and determine which technical requirements to deploy in the remainder of the production delivery process. All these would come together in what you call your house of quality. Some examples as you're building your house of quality. Typically shown in a matrix format. As you look at importance to the customer, you look at details that need to be offered, and you have different categories as well. Target and tolerance design. Manufacturing specifications consist of what you call nominal dimensions and tolerances. Nominal refers to the ideal dimension or the target value that manufacturing seeks to meet. Tolerance is the permissible variation. So you're recognizing the difficulty of meeting a target consistently. Traditionally, tolerances are set by convention rather than scientifically. A designer might use tolerances specified on previous designs or base a design decision on judgment from past experience. Setting inappropriate tolerances can be costly, however, since those tolerance settings often fail to account for the impact of variation on product functionality, manufacturability, economic consequences. The Taguchi loss function is a scientific approach to tolerance design. Taguchi assumed that losses can be approximated by a quadratic function so that larger deviations from target cause increasingly larger losses. Now we're not going to get into uh, the details of equations and statistical calculations. Really just want to focus on the general ideas as this is kind of an introduction course to quality and, and uh, the idea and the philosophy of quality management. But just so you're aware, there's uh, there are a number of statistical approaches and um, uh, equations that can be used in quality, especially when it comes to um, looking at variations, uh, statistical, statistical differences, uh, tolerance, and um, uh, we're not going to get into all the detailed calculations, however. Now the Taguchi loss function is a useful concept for process design. Taguchi suggests that there is not strict cutoff point that divides good quality from poor quality. Rather, he assumes that losses can be approximated by a quadratic function so that larger deviations from the target correspond to increasingly larger losses. Now, reliability is the probability that a product, piece of equipment, or a system performs its intended function for a stated period of time under specified operating conditions. In other words, how reliable is your well pump or how reliable is your car? Um, there are four key components of this definition, including probability, time, performance, and operating conditions. All of these have to be considered in a comprehensive definition of reliability. So in other words, a condition in which you drive your car, uh, the time frame in which it's driven, how it's driven. Probability allows comparison of different products and systems. Time allows, allows us to measure the length of, the, of life of the product. Performance relates to the ability of the product to do what it is designed to do. And operating conditions specify to amount of usage and the environment in which the product is used. A functional failure is one incurred at the start of a product's life due to defective materials, components, or work on the product. A reliability failure is one that's incurred after some period of use. For example, if a new TV set suffers a, a well, it just conks out during the first week, it's a functional failure. There's obviously a defect in the manufacture of the TV. 
perhaps there might be a reliability failure if uh, a feature of the TV set goes out, like the volume, uh, three days after the warranty uh, is up. That could be a reliability failure. Reliability engineers distinguish between inherent reliability, which is the predicted reliability determined by the design of the product of the process, and the achieved reliability, which is the actual reliability that somebody observed as they were using it. Achieved reliability can be less than inherent reliability due to effects of the manufacturing process and also conditions of use. In other words, how you're using the product and where. Product life characteristics curve is a so-called bathtub curve because of its shape. It's actually the failure rate curve uh, described here in this chart. Such curves can be used to understand distinctive failure rate patterns of various designs and products over time. The reliability function represents the probability that an item will not fail within a certain period of time, T. It's directly related to the cumulative distribution function. Now, robust design is going to refer to designing goods and services that are insensitive to variation in manufacturing processes when consumers use it. So we're talking a high level of design. It's facilitated by the design of experiments to identify optimal levels for nominal dimensions and other tools to minimize failures, reduce defects during the manufacturing process. Design failure mode and effects analysis identification of all the ways in which a failure can occur. You want to try to estimate the effect and seriousness of the failure. 